What is up, you guys? Your boy Hollywood AJ back with another episode of the Keep It 100 YouTube channel. Now, today I'm going to break down last weekend's pay per view main event between my guy Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier, the trilogy, the fight that was supposed to cap it all off, but we all know it ended in pure tragedy or pure joy for all those Conor McGregor haters out there on the planet Earth. I'm also here to school the casuals. You casuals think just because you see one UFC fight, that involves Conor McGregor in it, you think that you know the entire sport. Where me, I've dedicated my life to this sport since I was about seven years old, and I know everything about it. I know almost every fighter on the roster. So I'm just here to show you that you gotta look at both sides of the coin here. There's different insights in the fight game, and that's one of the reasons why I am making this video, to school you guys. I can't show you the fight, but I will break down everything I see in the fight, and you will know that, hey, some of the takes, from these supposed experts on ESPN and Fox Sports 1, some of these takes that these guys have made are pure blasphemy and that they need to get me on their shows because I feel like I'm the only one that's talking some truth these days. Without further ado, I'm going to give you guys a true insight on the fight. So here we go. I'm just going to call it how I see it, say what I feel. As always, I'm going to keep it 100 for this channel. So without further ado, here is the fight. All right, so the fight's about to start. Poirier was in the red, McGregor in the green. I was very blessed to witness this live. Vegas vlog will be dropping soon, detailing that entire trip, even the fight. Got to see McGregor's walkout, which is nothing short of spectacular. So the fight is underway. McGregor starts off with a wheel kick, two wheel kicks right off the bat. So McGregor already throwing more offense, more kick heavy, just as he was back in their first fight at UFC 178 in 2014. So right off the bat, four kicks. The last one that McGregor just threw missed. Five kicks. Six kicks. That was to a teat to, Mag to Poirier's stomach. And then a left and the right. Right cross to be exact. Another spinning back kick to the body by McGregor. So right now it's all McGregor on the feet. Lay kick from McGregor. Throwing a lot more offense is Conor McGregor, keeping his distance. Left hand landed by McGregor. Another kick. McGregor is putting on a clinic. That was a good kick by Poirier. Poirier fired back, but that was blocked. So McGregor, you know, he he's starting out fast like he always does. His first, The first round of the Conor McGregor fight for his opponent is extremely dangerous. We all know that. If you get out of that first round, you have a better chance of beating McGregor. But in this fight, I thought it'd be a little different, mainly because Conor McGregor showed he can go the distance in the Nate Diaz fight. Kick by Poirier. Hard leg kicks by Conor. Very hard. Left hand that caught him. They were trading leg kicks at one point in the fight, which is pretty crazy to see. Poirier landed some good punches there. A few good ones there. And then for those people saying that Conor shot him for the takedown, watch the fight again. Conor McGregor did not shoot. 100% Poirier initiated the clinch and that's what made Poirier shoot as well the clinch and him just being outclassed on the feet so far Poirier is looking for a single high crotch very common wrestling technique that a lot of MMA fighters use to get their fight to the ground now McGregor's got the guillotine he's got it in deep very deep guillotine that Conor McGregor had no arms in that is a 90% chance it is done but McGregor Poirier did a small thing that changed the outcome of this guillotine. He interlocked his toes in the fence. Now, for those that don't know, you cannot grab the fence and you cannot interlock your toes in the fence. Go back to when Conor McGregor fought Khabib. McGregor is grabbing the fence. Herb Dean tells him time and time again, don't grab the fence. He even interlocked his toes in the fence. The ref got on McGregor for that as well. That guillotine was in deep. Now, albeit is it is out of Conor McGregor's nature, to completely go for that guillotine, to go for any submission. I think that is his first ever submission attempt in UFC history. That is not in his MO, but that is probably the turning point of the fight. That was what made the fight swing in Dustin Poirier's way. Now, Dustin Poirier's landed some elbows. He's doing everything he can to just control Conor McGregor. Controlling him was the key on the ground. Now, McGregor defended pretty well. Right here, he's landed some big left elbows that is landing hard on Poirier. So McGregor is throwing offense off of his back. 
But all I got to say is, it's a big if, but that guillotine was in tight. If Poirier didn't cheat right there, as Poirier lands big elbows. If Poirier didn't cheat right there, McGregor probably would have put Poirier to sleep. Herb Dean missed that foul. He missed that. It's in the rule book. Poirier just simply cheated with his big old ears. And to be completely honest, from what I'm seeing, the only success Poirier had all fight was on the ground. And if you look at McGregor's face, even after the fight, McGregor don't have a mark on his face. Just a little scratches, a little cut in the ear, but Poirier hit him in the ear. Other than that, not a single scratch. Poirier did land some good shots, but hey, that was the only success he had the entire fight. And let's not forget, McGregor was landing huge up kicks as well. One right there. Boom. That one made Poirier go back into McGregor's guard. More elbows from Poirier. So for those saying that McGregor got his ass kicked, on the ground he did, sure. But on the feet, Poirier wasn't doing a goddamn thing. It's hilarious. More control. McGregor still defending. I, I just thought he had that guillotine. And I, I just think it's hilarious how Dustin cheated right there, putting his toes interlocked in between the cage. He, he did the right thing, though, in defending the guillotine. You're supposed to elevate, but he should have pushed off in a better way. Right now, they're up. McGregor lands another kick. And there's the leg break. And Poirier finishes the round, which is where I could see they gave Poirier that round. And I'm so happy Herb didn't stop it, but then when I seen McGregor's leg break, I knew it was done and over with. I've seen too many of those. But even on the punch that McGregor landed when he broke his leg, he landed. Many people thought it was a miss. Nah, McGregor landed. He landed hard and he landed good. It's just a freak accident that happened. It's just truly something crazy. You know, it seems like it's been happening more since fans have been back in the arena. More leg breaks, of course, Chris Weidman. His injury happened back at UFC 261 this April. Anderson Silva broke his leg against Chris Weidman back in 2013. And for those people saying, hey, I don't think the second round would have done much good for Conor McGregor, here's the fight you got to look at. Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler, UFC 262. Michael Chandler was dominating Charles Oliveira. He rocked Charles Oliveira in that first round. And 19 seconds into the second round, Charles Oliveira completely just outstruck Michael Chandler and landed up finishing the fight 19 seconds into the second round. So for that narrative that, oh, the second round wouldn't have helped McGregor, that's bullshit. It's MMA. Anything can happen. So that's just back to my point. Truly insane. And you, you just have to look at the facts. And that's exactly what I did. Poirier didn't do much on the feet. On the ground is where Poirier did all of his damage. And I think if McGregor wouldn't have broken his leg, we'd have gotten to see more of what McGregor had to, had to offer. But it was truly sad. Super sad to see. So, yeah. Look at the Charles Oliveira, Michael Chandler fight. It is truly insane how, you know, anything can happen in the sport. Who knows? We're, we're not going to know. We're not going to know. Now, does this warrant a third fight? Excuse me, a fourth fight with Dustin Poirier? I think so. Dustin Poirier can't call that a legitimate win. I mean, you, you just can't. It was a doctor stoppage TKO. Now, I know I am the biggest Conor McGregor fan ever. I'm just saying what I see. I am just saying what I see, guys. Is his career over? Absolutely not. He's going to come back, have many more fights. I think he, him and Dustin are going to run it back. But for this narrative that, you know, Poirier did better than McGregor, that he just absolutely dominated on the ground, just in one aspect of mixed martial arts on the ground. And you can't take anything away from that. That's why it's called mixed martial arts. Just crazy. It's the name of the game, name of the sport. And for all you guys making fun of Conor McGregor, all I got to say is, you know, I'd like for you guys to withstand that pain. You guys wouldn't come out for the second round either it's just kind of a dick move by you guys i know you guys are better than that so let me know what you think poria can't celebrate this win 
McGregor will be back with a vengeance. That's all I have to say. He will be back with a vengeance. It is going to be absolutely insane to see that this run is about to come from Conor McGregor. And I'm going to be there to witness it all. It's really sad to see, you know, and Poirier was kind of being a little bit of a prick after the fight. If he would have broke his leg, I wouldn't be making fun of him. And I'm pretty sure nobody on this planet knew who Dustin Poirier was until he defeated Conor McGregor back in January. Nobody. And I got everyone on this fight wave here in my city of Pueblo. So it's actually hilarious to see that, you know, so many people are making fun of a man that broke his leg. It's just, like I said, we're better than that. McGregor will be back. Poirier, I think he's going to lose his next fight to Oliveira. And he was just pure chaos. That's the fight game for you. Pure, pure chaos. And that's why I watch this sport. You know, if, if you're a Conor McGregor fan, Chris Weidman fan, Anderson Silver, Silva fan, you, you go through the highest highs and lows of lows. And that, that's just something that you just do not want to see happen to anybody. I mean, hell, I this would probably never happen to Jake Paul. But if this happened to Jake Paul, I would genuinely feel bad for Jake Paul because, you know, no one deserves for this to happen to them. Plain and simple. But McGregor is going to be back and he's going to get his revenge on Dustin Poirier. Dustin Sorier, I should say, as Colby Covington calls him. And he's going to get that belt back. And it seems as if Dustin Poirier was in his feelings. I mean, that's why he was being a little bit of a prick after the fight. I mean, McGregor's trash talk does work. We've seen it work on Jose Aldo, Eddie Alvarez, Khabib Nurmagomedov, now Dustin Poirier. It works, whether it be before the fight, after the fight, during the fight. That's the power of Conor McGregor and his trash talking. But here's the thing. This is called the ultimate fighting championship, not the ultimate feelings championship. Trash talk happens in all sports, even golf. I'm sure it happens. But here's the crazy thing. You can't let that stuff bother you. McGregor said worse to Khabib and albeit Khabib did worse. But if Poirier was this grown human that he said he was he wouldn't have let all this bother him and his wife holy smokes his wife is just even more of a prick i should say i don't know they seem like nice people they do a lot for charity and stuff but there's just no room for poirier to be that type of jerk you know in my eyes but hey he must have been that pissed off and truly in his feelings but it's the game we play and that's just how life goes Real quick though, Vegas vlog will be dropping soon. You're going to see everything I did in Las Vegas, including me going to the fight. I had a blast. Vegas vlog dropping within the next week or so. Be sure to check that out along with all my other wide array of sports and entertainment content that you do not want to miss.